to be significant. You know, after we've broken all the strongholds and you, 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 we wrote down our dreams, we prayed about our dreams, hands were laid on us, oils were put on us, everything was about us being significant. Now, the kind of person I am is that I've always been the kind, like, when you're telling me to do something, I like to know how I'm going to do it. Now, as on Sunday now, Pastor, Pastor Tony preached um, about getting the attention of the king. And I also saw um, when I was going through my notes, she, um, Pastor Tony also preached a message earlier on in the year, which talked about, oh, thank, oh, it, I, I've written it somewhere here, but I can't seem to get it. You're encountering God, that's it. Encountering God. So you have, we have all these messages. So basically what I'm trying to say is that we've come so far and what I'm try- what I felt God say to us is teach talk about setting goals. Now setting goals to me is a message you hear at the beginning of the year, not towards the end of the year. But I, when I started thinking about that, I felt God say to me that yes, but you've had so much teaching. Are people doing anything about it? You know, you leave on Sunday or Wednesday and you carry on with life as you know it. But as the days go by, do you still remember? Do you still do what you have learned? I mean, we had the praise week. It was awesome. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm always, my mind, I'm always praising God. But you know, by Wednesday, Thursday, that weekend was far, far, far. It seemed so far away. That, But you know, what we need to be doing is to be setting ourselves into a place where we're constantly in that place where God can speak, constantly in that place where we're moving into where God wants us to be. I hope that's making sense. So, um, living a life of purpose. I thought that, you know, we should talk about goal setting. And I'm sure everyone here knows about goal setting. But we're going to talk about it the smart way. And I'm sure people know the acronym SMART. So our goals needing to be specific. Our goals needing to be measurable. Our goals needing to be achievable, reliable, and time-driven. So I'll talk about each point as we go along. Um, if we open to Ephesians 5, chapter 5, no, sorry, chapter 5, verse 15. And if you could please put up the amplified version for me. My Bible is not amplified, but I like the amplified version. So, um, before, um, as and when they're ready, um, in order for all these messages that we've heard over the year, to make a difference in our lives, we need to set goals. And as Ephesians 5 says, look carefully then how you walk. Live purposefully and worthily and accurately, not as the unwise and witless, but as wise, sensible, intelligent people, making the very most of the time, buying up each opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be vague and thoughtless and foolish, but understand firmly grasping what the will of the Lord is. Oh, don't worry about that bit. So it, it tells us there in, 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 in those verses that we need to know what God's will is. We need to live in a focused manner. We need to live thoughtfully. We need to live wisely. So and if we go um first Corinthians nine twenty five to twenty seven Thank you. Now, every athlete who goes into training conducts himself temp- temporarily and restricts himself in all things. They do it to win a wealth 
that will soon wither. But we do it to receive a crown of eternal blessedness that cannot wither. Therefore, I do not run uncertainly without a definite aim. I do not box like one beating the air and striking without an adversary. But like a boxer, I buffet my body, handle it roughly, discipline it by hard do it for fear that after proclaiming to others the gospel, things pertaining to it, I myself should become unfit, not stand the test, be unapproved and rejected as a counterfeit. Now, that is just saying we should live our lives with certainty. We have to live our lives intentionally. Everything we do has to be done if I can borrow that word, with intentionality. If you go on to 1.8, I'm going to like max out my Bible verses. <laughs> James 1.8. For being as he is, a mind of two minds, hesitating, dubious, irresolute, he is unstable and unreliable and uncertain about everything he thinks, feels and decides. Now that tells you that we have to live with goals because if we don't, then we're going to be unstable. And look at what the Bible says. If, if, I mean, you'll be unreliable. So you need to live, you need to set yourself to sort of walk in where God wants you to walk. Now, um, if we look at the areas of our lives where we can set goals, so we can set spiritual goals for instance now spiritual goals are obviously the foundation and most important part most important sort of goals that we can set you need to understand who you are in god your prayer life how is your prayer life are you you know waking up in the morning or whenever you, you're supposed to be praying you know just not praying not reading your bible you know or do you read your bible sporadically you know, have you, I mean, at the beginning of the year, I, pro, I said to myself, you know, the beginning of the year is when you make all these resolutions. I was like, okay, fine, I'm going to read the whole Bible this year. And I've been saying that to myself for God knows how many years, but it hasn't happened yet. And I thought, okay, I'll do it. So I got a plan and I started and it was going well for at least six months. And then all of a sudden it started to dwindle down, which is the case for a lot of people. You set yourself goals and all of a sudden things start to go wrong and you know you you miss one day you miss two days and the plan i was going through if you miss two days that's chapters by the time you miss a week that's 70 chapters that's it done you're not probably going to go back there so i mean i'm talking to myself as well when i say set specific goals the goals need to be for you they need to be things that you can handle there's no point i mean if you want to set like um health goals or even fasting for instance a lot of people don't even fast unless a corporate fast is called so things like that you need to set goals for you can't just wake up one morning and say oh i'm gonna fast today it's not gonna happen you need to plan it i mean when i was and this is one of the things i mean thinking about being single and married and stuff like that i remember when i was single and um, and the pastors will say to us, when you're single, you need to do everything you can do and worship God and you know, and we're like, yeah, 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 you know, you say that because you're married, but it's so true because when the Bible says when you're single, you busy yourself with the things of God. When you're married, you have to care about the kids, you have to care about the husband and the wife and stuff like that. So there's not enough time to do all the things you used to do. And I remember when I was single, I used to fast like once a week. Now it's like, oh, wow, okay once a month. I mean, I do a few days a month, but I used to be constantly, every single Wednesday or Thursday, I used to fast. Nothing other than just to seek the presence of God. That was it. I used to, I could be in church all day, every day. Now, if I'm in church for too long, Joshua will start calling. So, you know, you need to now is the time if you're single and if you're married, you know, we'll keep pushing it all together and, you know, we'll get there. But um, you need to set all these goals, set goals for fellowship. Knowing that when you, knowing that when you are within your friends or you're going to church, having a, 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 a small group, a prayer group, you need goals for that as well. So, um, 
even for health, health and fitness. I'm sure a lot of people decided at the beginning of the year, I'm going to lose weight this year. But it, it hasn't come to pass. I mean, we're in November. I know it's not the end of the year and it can still come to pass. But, you know, you've probably spent the, rest, the, the most of the year not eating right. You haven't looked at your eating. And those need goals as well. So, like I said, the goals need to be specific. For your Bible reading, you set a plan. For exercise and fitness, you tell, oh, I'm going to be going to the gym this amount of time. Even it doesn't have to be the gym. It could be just walking up the stairs in my house, walking to the second bus stop, walking, getting off the train um, one stop earlier adding a handful of vegetables to my meal. It could be as easy as that. It could be having fresh orange juice once a week. Because, you know, it's not about being slim when it comes to health and fitness. It's about prolonging your life. Exercise, eating healthy, helps to prolong your life. It helps you to function better. You know, you, you, when you eat healthy, you, you just feel better. Obviously, when you do those things, you eat. But it, that's not the aim initially. It's just to be able to function efficiently. So, and also the Bible says that we must honor God with our bodies. So I think, I, I mean, I would definitely advise, I mean, everyone knows that this is my field and this is what I do. So I'll definitely advise people to live a healthier lifestyle. You know, things like blood pre- high blood pressure, um, cholesterol, high cholesterol, diabetes. They're not age-related illnesses, arthritis. They're not age-related illnesses. They're actually not. They can get anyone. So why would you pray about something you could have avoided? You know, one thing I know, one thing I've always said, I mean, and it, 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 it might not apply to everyone, but I've always said like Christians, they can stand in a queue for healing for three days, but you tell them to go to a gym for 30 minutes and they can't. But why would you do that? Why wouldn't you just Avoid the illnesses. You know, people don't understand what it means when you have excess weight. It, that's what increases your risk of diabetes. It might not run in the family, but you can actually get these things just by putting on too much weight. You know, I, I, I always say to, I used to say to my clients when they say to me, my... Um, or I have a family history of, or they have a family history of um, diabetes or heart disease and stuff like that. I always say to them that, yes, I understand that. But you know, your family history is the gun. Your lifestyle is the trigger. So when you start to eat unhealthy and live an unhealthy lifestyle, you pull the trigger on yourself. That's it. And people will think that's harsh, but it's true. It's the brutal fact, and that's what people need. (laughs) Right, moving on swiftly. Our goals need to be measurable. Now, one would say, how do you measure spirituality? Has your prayer changed? The way you worship God, has it changed? Hearing God, has it changed? You know, I remember when, I remember giving, um, when I, um, one Sunday I t- spoke about, um, um, I think it was 2006, when God asked me to give five pounds, and I decided not to. I, and he showed me the blessing. He actually t- walked me through the blessing and taught me a lesson, you know. And a few years later, so five times. 2006 and when it came to 2009 when he asked me to give I didn't even bat an eyelid and I gave you know I mean okay let's say I asked him a couple of questions and on Sunday this past Sunday I was sitting down I had an exam on Monday and I was studying and out of the blue God just said do this and I said yes sir 
that's how you know you've grown. That's how you know when you can hear his voice and you know for definite that's God's voice and you don't question it. You know, Pastor Sonia was saying, I can't remember if it was Sunday or previously that she was saying, but it was quite recently, that when you're a born-again Christian, the devil has got nothing on you. When God speaks to you, God speaks to you. You should not be hearing the devil's voice. You should only be hearing God's voice. And that is true. That is so true. You open up your mind and you open up your mind to God. And don't ask questions about, is it God? Is it me? Is it God? Is it me? Is it the devil? Oh, but the devil ain't, is not going to tell you to give in church. The Bible never contradicts itself, but God doesn't contradict his own word. So when you, that's how you can measure your spiritual fitness hearing God. You know, when you're praying, before when you used to pray, oh God, bless me, bless my family, bless my husband, oh God, bring my husband, oh God. And now you have a burden for the city. Now you have a burden for the church. That is spiritual growth. You know, now you, you, you care about people. You want them to see heaven. That is spiritual growth. So when you're setting your goals and you're trying to measure after a certain time, those are the things you can put in place to say, is this happening? Is this happening? Is this happening? And thirdly, the goals have to be achievable. Now, this is, this is always the funny one because... Um, there's no point in saying, oh, I've never exercised before, but I'm going to run the marathon in April, and it's right now November. Don't get me wrong, some people have done it. Last year, was it last year? Year before, I think, no, year before, um, I trained someone who never ran a marathon before, hated exercise, and come December, she says, Buki, I want personal training to, to run the marathon in April. I, put, I really honestly put my hands on my head. I was like, she said, do you think you can do it? I said, if you commit to it, you can. But you would walk a lot of the way. But you have to work hard. My girl hardly ever turned up for sessions. So on the day of the marathon, she walked. Because she couldn't run. It's not, it won't, it's not possible. She couldn't run. Because she only came to meet me when? In January. It's a four months. So I would say to her, run... I was pregnant then, and I'll be running with her. I'll run three miles. I'll, she won't turn up. At the same time, I trained somebody else who hadn't done a marathon before, was training, and me and this chick would run, sorry, me and this girl would run, like, um, obviously because I was pregnant, and Pastor would have killed me if I tried it. She would run 17 miles, and I'll run maybe seven with her. To, to our destination. So by the end of it, we would have run quite a, quite a good distance. So she'll run about, yeah, 17 miles, meet me at my house, and then we'll run maybe another five, six, or seven miles. And she ran. I remember the day when she texted me and said, on the marathon day, I sat here, and I just felt God say to me, go and pray. So I started praying. Obviously, for this girl, I was praying and praying and praying. She now texts me in the middle of my prayer. She said, I walk. It's a war. And that's how you, you know, that's, you know, when your goals are achievable, when, when you, you would know that, no, 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 I trained for this thing. When an exam is said before you, I studied for this exam. There's no how. You know, when, when they put a trial before you, you're not, no, no, I have the word inside of me. I can say the word. You, do you understand what I'm trying to say? So it's, this is how you, this is how you, you know, you get to those places, you achieve those goals. There's no point in saying, no, um, I want, I'm going to be a millionaire tomorrow. You, have you been a thousandaire yet? <laughs> As in, <laughs> you know, someone said, um, I want to run a million pound business. Have you run a hundred pound business yet? No, I want to be a 
give up for God. I want to give God, you know, all that I own. I want to just, have you paid your tithes? Have you done even the free will offering? You know, little things like that. So you set goals. Your giving has to be goal set. You have to say, you know what, Lord? This is what I want to be. I'm going to give my tithes. I'm, uh, uh, my free will offering is going to be this. I remember, I think it was me and my husband talking, and he said, um, he listened to a message, and the person said, he set a limit. Lord, I would never come before you with anything less than this amount of money. That's a huge challenge. And that's the same thing. I always think that, you know, in the old days, you never went to the house of the prophet without anything. You always had a gift. Why would you come to God's house without a gift? Because I remember there's a part in the Bible that said, I think it was when Saul and the servant were looking for the donkeys. And um, he said, let's go and ask the prophet where the donkeys are. And the guy said, but we have nothing to give the prophet. So, do you understand? You have to set goals in your giving. You cannot just give haphazardly, anyhow. You know, I have five pounds today, let me give you God. You know, he, don't, he, doesn't, need, he doesn't need it. It's, our own, it's for our own good. You know, apparently, I, I, I don't know, I've never heard him say it, but apparently Gio says, whatever, you, whatever leaves your hand now goes into your future. So, it, it, you're setting yourself up for a better future. Anyway, moving on swiftly. Your goal is relevant. So, if you're setting spiritual goals, they must all, the, the things that's in place must be spiritual. If you're setting fitness and health goals, they must be relevant to that as well. Your goals at the end of the day must glorify God. It's not about you. It's not about a million and other one people. It's just about God. You know, going back to that first message that we heard in the year, act of kindness, you have to set goals. Seriously, in this day and age, you have to be determined to be kind. It's hard. It's so hard. I remember one of my friends used to call me Anu. It's not my name, but it means, I think it means merciful or something. I, I, I can't, but because every time we were driving and I saw a car stop, I'd be like, do you know what's wrong with them? Should we go and help them? See, but you don't know why they've stopped. Why would you go and help them? I could be walking in the street. Some, oh, are you okay? And I would, you know, I was at, at uni the other day and this is, you know, I like accents and I've sort of got a few things from Norwich. And (laughs) Norwich accent is really, really funny. But um, in Norwich, they say, um, are you right? Instead of, are you all right? (laughs) So it's one word. So I'd forgotten where I was and I was at uni and uni is in Hertfordshire. They have a totally different accent. And this girl standing around, and I just kept looking at her, like, oh, she doesn't look like, you know, she was standing around, like, are you all right? And she was like, huh? <laughs> and she was like, pardon? I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. Are you okay? Do you need any help? She was like, no, I'm okay. I'm just waiting for a friend. But I just thought, do you know, my first instinct is always to go out to help. But you, I had to make myself do it all the time. I had to make myself, I mean, don't get me wrong, I don't always think that if I'm kind to people, people are going to be kind to me. Because if I think that, then I have ulterior motives. But I actually don't think that people are, when people are kind to me, I'm always surprised. I go out there, and I go out there to help. I don't always do it, but I make an effort. I plan to do it. And that's what I'm trying to tell you. You plan to do these things. You set goals to do these things. Um, even in, in personal development, you know, you set those goals as well. How many books are you reading? You know, my husband always talks about leadership books. How many leadership books have you read this year? And stuff like that. But how many books have you read that will spiritually develop you, that will personally develop you, even for your careers? How many courses have you been on? 
you know, you want to run a business in your career, you want to become a consultant, who mentors you? Who have you put in place to, to actually help you to achieve these goals? And lastly, time. I said to myself, I'll read the Bible in a year. But the small print was that I'll read the Bible in six months. That was the small print. So I put too much pressure on myself. So when I missed one, I missed two, I missed three days. Then I sort of fell apart because it was hard to keep up. This is 10 chapters a day. By the time it's three, four days, that's 40 chapters. And unless 10 chapters would take me properly, 10 chapters takes me an hour. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? So, but if I'd set those goals as in, okay, a whole year, and maybe, t- I think for you to read the Bible in a year, I think you need to just to read two, three chapters a day. Yeah. I'll be flying right now. So it's, you need to put times that are reasonable. I want to lose weight. I want to become like Naomi Campbell in two months. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. Even if you starved yourself. It's not going to, you know, I want to run a marathon in four months. No. These things need to be done gradually. You have to sit down and plan what you're going to do. One thing I've realized is the enemy always, always, always tries to steal time. That's the most important thing. We can't get it back. You need to use your time wisely. You need to put things in place. There's no point, and I'm, I'm, I'm guilty of this sometimes as well. There's no point in saying something's supposed to be at seven or eight, and you turn up like five hours after, expecting everyone to still be there waiting for you. You know, on, on, on your wedding day, you turn up like 40 minutes late or an hour late. No, it's not on. I learned quite early on in my Christian, in Christian life that no, it's not on. You need to respect your time, respect other people's time as well. And that's why when you do that, when people call you to things or people ask you to do something, because they know you're going to get there early, they will get there early. So you need to respect time. When you put time, you need to always, when you put time in place, you need to hold yourself accountable. And if my husband is watching this, he's probably thinking, okay, Bookie, that doesn't sound like what you do. (laughs) But you know what? I'm trying. I'm trying. I always say to people, I never commit to time. I never. Because I will be don't make it. So if you say, what time are you going to get there? (laughs) I'll get there as soon as I can. That's all I'll say. I don't commit to time because I don't want to disappoint people. But if you say to me, be there at 7 o'clock, you bet you I'll be there at 7 o'clock. If I'm going to be late, I'll tell you at 4 o'clock that I'm going to be late. And that's what I've learned. And I, I, I didn't learn it myself. I learned it from the pastors. So that, those are the kind of things that you need to be doing to, to get to that point where you can stand, lift your head eye and say, I have entered into my significance through God's love. It's through God's You need to pray all these goals through. You need to ask God, how am I going to set these goals? What works for me? Some people wake up at clock. Some people wake up at four. Some people wake up at five to pray. But you know what? It's not going to work for everybody. I never knew that when I, I just, I mean, when I didn't think that when I was in uni, life could be so complicated. Before, my husband and I would pray 
quite often together. As soon as university entered, it's like we have to, because sometimes I leave home at 5.15. I'm not going to wake the poor man up at 5, 4 o'clock in the morning to, to, to pray. So we'd have to set new goals now and say, when is it best to do this? So you have to, at each stage of your life, you might have to change certain things. But if you bear in mind that your goals need to be specific, your goals need to be measurable, they need to be achievable, they need to be reliable, and you need to set times by them, if you do that, then you would be able to achieve anything that you set your mind to through Christ that strengthens us. Does that make sense? Cool. So, lastly, very, very lastly, you need to give yourself a pat on the back when you have reached an achievement. If you've prayed consistently for two weeks, you need to buy yourself a chocolate or something. Do you understand? In terms of relationships for husbands and wives, if you, if you set goals that I'm not going to argue, or I'm not going to snap at my wife or my husband, and you haven't done so for one week, take each other out to dinner. If you've prayed consistently, if you've gone to the gym consistently, if you walked up the stairs consistently, if you've done these things, then give yourself a pat on the back. Because we all love to be, to be, what's the word? Acknowledged. We all love to be praised, appreciated. So appreciate yourself. Appreciate yourself. Love yourself. Because the Bible says that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. So love yourselves. I don't tell myself that I'm stupid. Never. Because I know God hasn't created a stupid person. If I make a mistake, I make a mistake. You know? And when I, I do good, I praise myself. I tell myself, go, go girl. You know, you've done well, Buki. You've done really well. I'm proud of you. Get yourself a mentor. Somebody who you can rub minds with. Touch base with. It can be anyone. But the person needs to be that few steps ahead of you. So they can have wisdom to impact. They can have something to say. I hope all of that makes sense. And that's so far as my papa in heaven has told me to tell you. And um, I, I pray that as you go forth from here, I pray that um, the words would grow seeds. I pray that God will not leave you. He will never forsake you. I pray that as you set your goals, he speaks into your heart to what area he wants you to deal with. I pray that and you will see results. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you.